We should remember ourselves at least once a day. If you can't remember yourself once a day, then remember yourself three times a day. That's funny, isn't it? You know what's funny about that? We think of that, we're like, well, if I can't remember myself once a day, how am I going to remember myself three times a day? Well, what the work is really saying when it says that is, look, if you can't remember yourself once a day, remember yourself three times a day. What it's really saying is make more effort. You're not making enough effort. If you can't remember yourself once a day, you're not making enough effort. If you're not making enough effort, you have not placed proper valuation on this. Placing proper valuation on this is a very simple process. For me, it's very simple. And here's how I do it. Do you want to be happy? Then remember yourself at least three times a day. So remember yourself. Remember to remember. Make effort. Like actors who've forgotten that they're playing a role, we identify with this character. Just in case you hadn't noticed, I came in this morning and Jennifer says to me, I like your jacket. You know, and I thought about the jacket when I put it on this morning. I thought, you know, this is really such an annoying jacket because it has those those leather string things that hang from everywhere. And it's like if you try and buckle yourself into your seatbelt in your car, it's like <laughs> you try to close it. You know, I've got a little two-seater, so I close the door and the little leather things are hanging out. And I love the jacket, but it's so annoying to wear because I feel like I've got spiders all over, you know, following me. It's like, ugh, you... I don't know, it's like, a, I feel like a marionette with all these strings. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Here we are, marionettes with all these strings. And all these strings are connected to all these things in life and they're pulling us every which way and we can't even, we can't do anything. It's all mechanical. It's all just being done for us. You know, our arms and legs are all being pulled around and everything's being pulled around by the events in life. So I looked at myself you know, the hat and the jacket and sandals and the sweater, you know, it's like, and I thought, who dressed you? Somebody who doesn't care. You know, somebody who just doesn't care. Does you know there are people who dress like this on purpose? Diana, you surely you know this. You're one of these people. Diana gets dressed. She thinks about what she's going to wear. I think about the colors. Does this color clash too much with this? In that case, I'm wearing it because I feel it feels good and it's cold out. And I want a nice sweater on, and that's what I'm wearing. Because it doesn't clash too much with this. The gray one would. Gray one doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't work. But this works, so I'm going to do this. Kind of earth tones. Well, it's cold out, but it's not that cold, so I think I'll wear this jacket because it's not really that heavy. But it's got all these things hanging on it, all this leather stuff hanging on it. Yeah, but, you know, you never really wear the jacket, and it's probably feeling... Like, you don't love it, you know. So, we're crazy. And I list myself right up there at the top of the list. I understand that I'm a crazy machine. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason to all of this from a conscious point of view. From a mechanical point of view, it all makes sense. If anything can make sense. But here we are identified with this character. I realized what a character I was. But then I also realized that I'm not identified with that character. It was only when Jennifer said, oh, I like the jacket. And I thought, huh? Yeah, you know, I was really worried about this character who put this jacket on this morning and came here. I thought, who is this person? It's not I. I wear a white shirt and a tie and a charcoal gray pinstripe business suit. That's who I am. In my mind, that's who I am. I'm a professional. Well, these pictures don't match. See, that, that picture that I just told you that I have in my mind, that doesn't match with what I'm looking at here. What happened here? That's self-observation. What happened here? Why don't these pictures match? Well, because they're just pictures. None of it is real. None of it is me. That's not me. That's not I. That, to me, is self-observation. I'm not sitting across the room from this stranger or anything, I'm looking at these pictures and going, none of this makes any sense. Whatever made this thing the way it is, it's not I. But like actors playing a role, who have forgotten that they're playing a role. They're so identified with the character, they think they are the character. You know, they say that Bela Lugosi used to actually creep around at night. He got so into the Dracula thing that he actually started wearing the cape and the whole thing all the time, going around, I want to suck your blood. You know? <laughs> and, and people started to worry about him. I think he actually spent some time in an institution trying to work out some of these problems that he was having of being too identified with this character. We must see... We ourselves are something else. Yes, I have this jacket. Yes, I have this business suit. Yes, I have this white shirt. 
and this navy blue tie with these regimental stripes. Yes, I have that, but I myself am not that. I am not that suit. I am not that jacket. I am not that image. I am not that person who wears that. I myself am something different. Well, what are you? Well, I'm not sure about that, but I know that I'm not that. I know that that is not I. Well, what is I? I don't know that. But through a process of deduction, I hope to find out. I hope to be able to eliminate all of those eyes that I have thought I was. That if I can look at them and not be them and say, well, that's not I. That if I can eliminate enough of them, eventually I will be standing there alone. Well, who is that? Well, I don't know. But I, but I have faith. And when I say faith, I mean I have a confident expectation that this work will reveal that to me somehow. That eventually, if I continue to follow this path and to continue to follow these principles, that it will eventually reveal to me who I really am. But I don't know who it is now. I don't know who real I is, and neither do you. And if you say you do, you're a liar because you're talking about something you don't know anything about. And that's the work's definition of a liar. Nothing personal. I'm not calling you a liar. You know, it's a personal thing. I'm just saying that you don't know what you're talking about. And if you're offended by that, well then, I'm sorry. If you like to take offense, take the gate too. If we're identified, we're not doing this work. If you're offended, you're not doing this work. If I can offend you, you're not doing this work. <laughs> Pure and simple. There's no reason to do this work if we don't wish to do this work. Newsflash, there's no reason to do this work if you don't want to. You don't have to. Nobody's twisting your arm. Nobody's making you do this work. I don't pay you to come here. You pay me to be here. Figure that out. Nobody is making you do this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. This work is for people looking for something. The people who already have something, they don't care about this. The people who have the house, the car, the jobs, the, the wife, the goals, the schooling, the education, the, the business, they don't care about this. It's for people who have all that and go, oh, you know, this isn't it. There's something else. That's those people. This work is for those people. It's not for the people who are satisfied with what they have. It's for the people who realize that what they have is empty. There's really nothing to it. That there's no, there's no sense in it. What's the point of life? What is the point of life? Whoever has the most stuff at the end wins. Oh. Wow. That's the point, huh? I'll take door number three. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. That doesn't look like a good idea to me. That goes nowhere as far as I'm concerned. This work is for people like that. So if you're one of those people, okay, well, then great. You're in the right place. If you're not one of those people, wander out one of the doors that you came in. You'll be happier. Well, actually, maybe you won't. Maybe, maybe you're happy here. If you're happy here, just sit here. Fine. You know, that's okay. Just sit here. Okay, it's okay with me. We can't understand what it means to remember ourselves until we realize that we don't remember ourselves. And this is the big hitch here. You can't really understand what it means to remember yourself until you realize you don't remember yourself. When you start to realize you don't remember yourself, when you start to wake up now and again and go, oh my God, I just spent two weeks and I had, I'd never, I was totally asleep. I never remembered myself one time. Well, you remember the time we did the, we did the exercise where every hour on the hour you're supposed to remember yourself. And if you didn't, you ended up throwing cold water in your face. Mm -hmm. oh! And people went around with little bottles of, you know, little cups of water, little bottles of water. <laughs> they throw water in their face, you know, and other people went around with egg timers on their belts. <laughs> you know, oh! And the egg timer would go off at the, on the hour. They go, Oh, I remembered myself. No. <laughs> No, you didn't remember yourself, you idiot. You used a machine to remind you to remember yourself. <laughs> yeah, what's that annoying egg timer? Who put that on my belt? Uh, idiots. Must be some practical joke. <laughs> well, one hour eggs. <laughs> They're going to be tough. <laughs> but you remember that? Boy, what a bunch of. I'll tell you what, boy. We're out there. <laughs> There's no question about it. When we go for it, we go all kinds of weird places to get it, <laughs> you know, but it's okay because that's all the process of learning this, of seeing that we're machines that we don't remember ourselves, <laughs> that we even think of mechanical ways to remember ourselves. We can't even think of creative, you know, how do you remember yourself? Consciously with effort. Well, how are you going to do it? I'm going to do it with an egg timer. <laughs> <laughs>
it's really, it's really kind of funny, isn't it? But it, it, it's just so perfect. It says so, it just says machine. It just says it so perfectly. It just says machine in capital letters, neon, flashing. <coughs> machine, machine, machine. And it's great because we're all machines. We need to realize that we don't remember ourselves. If we're identified, we're not remembering ourselves. I know all this stuff is so simple, really. We need to remember that we're not remembering ourselves. We need to remember that when we're identified, we're not remembering ourselves. But we need to remember ourselves at least once a day. And if you can't remember yourself once a day, then remember yourself three times a day. You see, all the people who don't want something, they've already left. They listened to that and they went, this guy is nuts. He doesn't make any sense. But if you want something, you want it enough, you'll make sense of this. Because I admit, this doesn't make sense. Not on a surface level. You have to dig a little deeper in order to make sense of this. But when you do, you'll find that it runs very deep. There are degrees and qualities of identifying. How could you call identifying a quality? Well, because there are good kinds of identifying and there are bad kinds of identifying. Now, some, some kinds of identifying are not so bad. I identify with Buddha. I identify with Jesus. Well, it's not a major identification. You know, I don't sleep like, you know, on a cross or anything. You know, I don't like meditate 18 hours a day, never moving, you know, never eating. You know, I don't do those things. So it's a mild kind of identification. It's more of a, of a kind of an admiration, imitation. You know, the highest form of praise is imitation. It's more like that. More like, you know, I really would like to be more like that. I really would like to be more like those guys. And I realize that it's not a matter of how you sit and how you dress and how you walk and what you eat. I, I, I realize that it's a matter of what you do. And that's difficult, but that helps to make the identification not so intense because if I have to do it, well, <coughs> it's so much easier to just think about it than it is to actually do it. So the identification is not that powerful because the doing is so hard. It's hard to do what they did. And you only know that if you tried it. And you only know if you tried it, if you were awake enough, long enough to actually attempt it and realize, I can't do this. Some slight forms of identification are trivial and important. Some lead to bigger forms very quickly. Beware the little foxes that spoil the grapes. Oh, it's just a little identification. Beware the little foxes. It's the little foxes that spoil the grapes, as King Solomon said. It's not the big things that get us. It's the little things that get us that suck us in quietly, easily. And then the trap springs and we're stuck and we can't get out. Through self-observation, our internal world becomes visible to us. You see, we live in darkness and we don't know it because we're constantly projecting all of this stuff. We're like, we're like in a dark movie theater, but we're projecting everything up onto this screen. So we think that that's life. Oh, this is wonderful. The music and the sound and the, and the, and the big picture. And it's just so beautiful. But we're in a dark movie house and we don't know anything that's around us. We don't even know where we're sitting. We don't even know that we're not the people that we're projecting onto the screen. We're so identified with those characters. We don't know that we're sitting in seats, that we're separate from them. We don't know that. We can learn to recognize where we are internally. We can learn what takes us up, what takes us down inside of ourselves. You are learning this. You're learning what takes you up, what takes you down inside of yourself. You realize that there's some eyes who always take you down into negative, depressing, bad places. Don't go with those eyes. You're learning not to go with those eyes. You're learning to recognize them. How? By observing them over and over and over again. The same pattern shows up over and over and over again. These same eyes, they have the same little song. Oh, well, the way they treat you. Oh, well, he just did this. Oh, well, she just did that. Oh, well, that's just wrong. Oh, well, you deserve a lot better than that. Those little eyes that sing those little songs always take you to the same slums inside of yourself. And then you get in those slums and sure enough, you get mugged, you get robbed, you get raped. You get all the stuff, you get carjacked, you get all the stuff you don't like. But you, you don't like. You don't like those things, but you keep forgetting and going with those little lying eyes that always take you to the same place. And you end up there and you go, how did I end up here? It must be your fault because I don't like it here. And that's how we do it. We don't like it. That's why we blame other people because we hate it so much. We know we wouldn't go there. 
So it must have been somebody else tricked us. I know. This is so good. You know what's so good about this? It's so true. You hear this and you go, man, that is so true. That is exactly what happens to me. That's exactly how it is. But you only know that because you're observing yourself. Now, you're not observing yourself much, but it doesn't take much, does it? It really doesn't take a lot of self-observation to start to realize that there are a lot of cracks in your armor, that there are a lot of wrinkles in your face, you know, that you are just not this glowing, shining, wonderful being that you thought you were. You start looking a little closer and it's like, ooh, ow, wow, that's so, ah, ooh, ow. And if you have the courage to continue to look, it gets easier. So here's the deal. Can we really afford to walk in our sleep for a long time? You know, it's dangerous out there. It's like living next to a freeway and being a sleepwalker. Just a matter of time before you walk in front of a big bus or truck or car or whatever. And that's the end of that. So can you really afford to sleepwalk for a long time? The answer to that is, I hope for you, no. Self-remembering is, is our most important task. Identifying is self-remembering's arch enemy. It's the Joker to Batman. You know, it's kryptonite to Superman. Identifying is the undoer of everything that we're trying to do. When you think about how we rush to identification, it's frightening. We have to study our forms of identifying. You gotta know the enemy. You gotta know the enemy. If you don't know the enemy, how are you gonna know the enemy? Just that simple. You've got to be able to see and identify and recognize the enemy your forms of identification. Imagine finding yourself on a stage with thousands of other actors and then realizing that they're all asleep, that not one of them knows that they're not the part that they're playing. You're on this stage, thousands of other actors, they're all identified and you realize, oh my God, they don't know they're playing a part. So what's your first instinct? What do you do? Wake them up. Dude, you're not a bad guy. No, no, you're not a criminal. No, you're not a murderer. No, you don't, you're not, you don't, no, you don't really stick knives in people. So you go around and you try and wake the people up. Well, what are the chances of them waking up? And what are the chances of them sticking you with a knife instead? Very high. Our first instinct, oh, wake them all up. That's not such a good idea. Because people get grumpy when you wake them up when they don't want to be awakened. They get just grumpy and cranky and they do unpleasant things sometimes. They say and do unpleasant things. So my recommendation is don't go around mechanically trying to wake people up. Better to wake yourself up. Better to make sure you're awake. Better to make sure you stay awake than it is to go around waking the world up. So you'll pay the price if you try to do that, but go ahead and pay the price if you need to do that. Our lives are parts that are given to us in this great drama of life. We receive the part that's best suited to us. You are the best Tammy there is. There just isn't a better one. I know, I've known a lot of them. I've looked at a lot, I looked at a lot of people here. You do this better than anybody. You do this better than anybody. You do that better than anybody. You are best suited for this. But what's even more important is this thing that you are doing is the best part from which to awaken. For him to awaken from here, that's not gonna happen. He can only awaken from there. He can only awaken from there, and I can only awaken from here. This is where I need to awaken from. This is the best part for me. This part is suited perfectly for me. This is perfect. There are no mistakes here. It's from this that I must awaken. The work takes life as a means to another end. This must be clearly understood. It says we take life in the wrong way and we have to learn to take life in the right way. What does that mean? Well, it means that we take life in the wrong way. Well, we take life as something that means something. No, this life doesn't mean anything. This is all just a big machine whirring away. It doesn't mean a thing. One of the things in Vietnam during the Vietnam War that soldiers used to say to each other when their friends would get killed, you'd look and you go, one minute he's there and the next minute he's gone. They'd say, it don't mean a thing. And it was their way of not identifying and staying psychologically sound, insulating themselves psychologically from the horror of war, the horror of man's in inhumanity to man, the insanity of it. Because when you're in it, it's insane. You either go insane or you find a way to psychologically insulate yourself from it. And that was one of the ways they used. It doesn't mean a thing. Don't mean a thing. And the truth is this life doesn't mean a thing. That's the truth. But you can make it mean something. When we're identified, we can't remember ourselves. Higher influences can't reach us. They can't help us with certain emotions, thoughts, feelings, thoughts, emotions, and feelings that are apart from life. See, the thoughts, emotions, and feelings in life aren't going to help you. If they were going to help you to evolve, to develop, 
Don't you think you would have evolved and developed by now? Mm -hmm. I mean, surely you've had enough thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Strong ones, lots of them. But it just, just hasn't worked. It's going to take some other kinds of thoughts, feelings, and emotions from somewhere other than life. That's what this work is about. This work is about giving you something, some food that doesn't come from the contaminated, pesticide-filled field of life, but that comes from someplace else that can truly nourish the part of you that needs to grow. While the part of you that's been feeding and growing, the part of you that is not real, that part of you is gobbling up everything it gets. But this other part of you has been starving. This work is about feeding that other part of you, the essential part of you, and making the monster part of you, the part of you that life made, passive or more passive. We think that we can do. We think that we're conscious. We think we're a unity. We think we're one. Well, I'm going to do this. Uh, which I? Well, what do you mean, which I? Me, I, me, I'm going to do it. And do you? Oh, no. Why is that? Well, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot means some other I took over. And the I that was going to do that, he was somewhere else. Well, this other I took over and he was driving. Well, I thought we were going to New York. Yeah, but this other I is driving now. It's like you were sleeping in the back seat. This other I got up there and he started driving. He took a turn. He went in here. You ended up in Ohio. Well, Ohio isn't New York. Well, it's got a Fifth Avenue. You know, well, that's great. You know, but it's not New York. This is the illusion of life. This is what esoteric teachings are all talking about. And they talk about illusion. We think we can do. We think we're conscious. We think we're unity. We think we're one. In life, everything happens the only possible way that it can happen. Because it's a machine. A machine does the only possible thing it can do. See, cars are not boats. Boats are not airplanes. Toasters are not cameras. Cameras are not... Help me here. Pianos. Pianos, thank you. <laughs> right. Trying to play a C chord on a toaster is stupid. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done. There are probably people who could do it. I'm not one of them, and I'm not going to learn how so that I can be one of them. When we act, when we do, it's not us doing it. It's the only thing we could do. This is a very difficult concept to accept. Why? Because we think we're conscious. We think we can do. We think we're unity. So this is offensive. What do you mean it's the only thing I could do? That's what I mean. Well, you don't know anything. <laughs> well, I beg to differ. I think you're the one who doesn't know anything. No, it's true. I don't know anything, but I don't know. But I know I don't know anything, so I'm relying on somebody who does know something. Well, who's that? Well, the conscious circle of humanity, who have proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that they do know something. Well, how'd they prove that? Well, they can do what I can't do. Well, like what? Well, like anything. Just, just about anything. That's pretty sad, actually, when you think about it. Well, I can't do anything? No. Pretty much it all just happens. It's a terrible thing to have to admit. But I'll tell you what, look at the smile on my face once you get it. It's like, hey, I can't do anything. This is it. It's like, it really is a relief. Oh, whew. so that's how come I couldn't do anything. I can't do anything. No wonder I can't do all these things I wanted to do. I can't do anything. I'm not conscious. I'm not a unity. Whew. Man, I thought I was just a real slacker and lazy and a bum and everything was messed up. This is exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's a machine. It's just running. It doesn't need any consciousness at all. You turn the machine on, you go away. How many of you turn the oven on and then stay there and watch it and make sure it does its thing? Okay, so we have one. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there? Well, it sounds so fatalistic. Well, there's a way out. And that's what this work is about. This work is the way. It's the way out. What do you mean it's the way? There's no other ways? No, there are lots of other ways. Take any one you like. It's okay with me. I don't want to argue. I'm not trying to start a religion. Do whatever flips your switch. Whatever makes you happy. Makes you happy to do some other way? Good. Do some other way. Whatever works for you. I'll be happy with that. The important thing is that you find your way out. That's the important thing. That you find your way out of this misery into happiness and fulfillment. As we begin to realize our mechanicalness, we begin to remember ourselves. We begin to separate from the machine of ourself. This is a form of self-remembering. We spectate ourselves, in a sense, seeing what we called us. Our life, everything about us, is an illusion. We start to see that. We start to, sp we start to actually view it and go, uh, it's just not true. Everything that I thought was true about me is not true. Wow, that's horrible. Yes, at first it's horrible. But later, it's very cool. Later, it's a huge relief. Later, it's total freedom. It's like, oh, that's not I. All that 
that I thought was me isn't. It's a relief. It's a load off. It's a weight off. You feel lighter. You raise your level of being. You float above all the stuff that was anchoring you. All of your duties, all of your petty grievances, all of your internal considerations, all of your vengeance, all of your accounts. You're freed from all that. It's all wiped clean. You just float above it. Ah, if that's not I, then I don't have to worry about that. I tell you, that does make you happy. It really does. I don't take my word for it. Try it. What good is it if you sit there and go, oh, yeah, that's right. That makes him happy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, look at him. That really makes him happy. Well, that's great. But what about you? Wouldn't you too like to be happy? It is acting. Everything in life seeks to keep us asleep. We live in this world of sleeping people in which everything happens. We also are asleep. The difference is that we're trying to wake up. I'm asleep just like you. I'm asleep just like them. The difference is I'm trying to wake up. How many people do you know who are trying to wake up? You go, go out there and talk to somebody out there. Hey, are you trying to wake up? What are you, an idiot? I'm awake. What's the matter with you? Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry I asked. This is the part where you don't go around the stage, you know, waking up the actors. Hey, come on, you're not a bad guy. Don't stick that knife in him. We can't change life. Life becomes our teacher when we understand it offers us different circumstances, different experiences, different moments with which not to identify. All of this, this cornucopia of opportunity is all designed for you to realize that you're asleep, that you're doing the only thing you could possibly do. You couldn't do it any other way, and neither could they, because they're all part of the machine. They're just little wheels in the big machine, and they're all just turning, turned by some other wheel, turned by some other wheel, turned by some other wheel, turned by some other wheel. And it's only when you begin to see this that you get any kind of freedom from it at all. Really see it and see that you are not it. We can't change life. Life is a series of shifting outer events and inner states. They don't stay the same. None of it does. Nothing does. Oh, that's not true. My address is the same. Yes, but it's not the same. What do you mean it's not the same? It's just what I said. It doesn't look the same today as it did yesterday. Well, that's because we had a windstorm. <laughs> that's my point. If we stick at every point, we're identified all the way around, taking everything personally, like an actor who takes his role that he has to play as himself. Like Bela Lugosi thinking he's Dracula. It limits your experience. If you think about that, oh, where are you going to dinner tonight? <laughs> I'm going to the blood bank. You know, it's like, where are you going to dinner for breakfast? I'm going to the blood bank. Where are you going to dinner for lunch? I'm, where are you going for lunch? I'm going to the blood bank. Uh, you ever going anywhere else? No, I have to have blood all the time because I'm Dracula. You were Bella Lugosi yesterday. Well, I'm Dracula today. You see what I mean? You get stuck in that. Where are you? You're lost in the wheel. Whew, it just keeps turning, 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 turning. And you keep repeating, repeating, repeating. We're asleep. We're being turned round like little wheels by the big wheel of life. You're playing a typical role that millions of others have played and are playing. You'll not get free of it unless you wake up and see that you're not remembering yourself. You've got to see that you're not remembering yourself. You've got to see this. You've got to stop being so complacent about how wonderful you are and how much you're always remembering yourself. You've got to see that you're not. And the thing is, is that what stops us is our pride and our vanity because we want to remember ourselves. That's what we're here for. Well, if we're here to remember ourselves and we're not remembering ourselves, then what does that make us? Well, it makes us stupid and slackers. Well, we know we're not stupid slackers, so we must be remembering ourselves. Makes sense to me. So I'm remembering myself, so we start pretending to remember ourselves. And we pretend that we're remembering ourselves so well, we forget that we're pretending. And the next thing you know, you think you're Bella Lugosi. You think you're playing, you think you are Dracula, but you're not Dracula. And you're not the hero of this show. You're just a little wheel being turned by bigger wheels. I don't want to be that. I, I want to be somebody else in this play. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not the role you got. The role you got is the best role for you to wake up from. See, we don't play these roles, they play us. To play a role consciously is, is what the work calls doing. Only conscious man can do. As we are, the roles play us. So we begin by silently saying, I am not this. You begin inside of yourself by silently saying, 
I am not this. So you find yourself angry, really upset. I'm not this. You find yourself hurt, really hurt. I'm not this. You just silently say to yourself, I am not this. And you begin to separate from it. You find yourself internally considering, he should have treated me better. You know, nobody should treat another human being like that. I'm not this. He can't do anything about how he's treating me, any more than I can do anything about how I think I should be treated. It's all the role we're playing. It's all part of the machinery. But I am not this. That's where we start. This is to begin to remember oneself as different from these eyes. First, we practice by stopping everything, by being not in anything. What does that mean? What, just, what is, just what it says. That's just that simple. No big mystical meaning here. Just stop everything. So, you find yourself upset internally, really angry. Stop it. Well, how do you stop it? This is not I. Well, it feels like I, but it's not. Well, I think it's I, but it's not. So, you have a thought that this is I. You have a feeling that this is I, but it's not I. How do you know that? The work told you that. Well, what does that know? That doesn't know anything. I know because I think it and I feel it. Fine, you're identified. You're gone. Bye. You know, just start waving. Bye. Because, you know, pack your bags. You're going on a trip. Don't know if you'll ever be back. Bye. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not connected with anything in life or in ourselves as life has made us. In ourselves as life has made us. You've got to see how life has made you. How has life made you? Oh, just like my father. Ooh, that's a bitter dose. That's just such a bitter dose. That's the one thing I didn't want to do. The one thing I set out not to do, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> There's proof that I can't do. I'm just like my dad. But it wasn't all bad. That's as good as it gets right now. That is not I. But what life has made is just like him. Little stamp. Just stamped it right out. Just like him. You're just like your mother. You're just like your mother. You're just like your mother. The first three levels of consciousness, sleep in bed, so-called waking consciousness in which people live and kill each other. I'm awake. I'm killing people. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you sure are awake. I'm awake. I hate everybody. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> yes, congratulations. <laughs> Makes me happy to kill people. Oh, that's, that's great. Okay, well, be happy then. And the third state, self-remembering. Only in self-remembering can anything higher penetrate and help us. This is why we try to practice self-remembering every day, because we have to, or else we're stuck on this wheel. We're stuck in this machine. We're stuck, identified with these roles we're playing, unable to do anything except go round and round and round. This work offers you a way out, but you've got to want out. You've got to really want out. And there's only one way to really want out. Look and see where you really are. When you see where you really are, when you see who life has made you, what you are, you'll want out. Till then, this is all just words.